mode. Welcome everyone to the 66 Cash Nolly Seekers Workshop. It's Thursday, June 18th, 2015. And today, once again, we will hear from Mr. Cash of the Cash Foundation Spaceship Institute. And um, first, we're going to have the promotional video from the Cash Foundation Spaceship Institute. Where does humanity go from here? What have we tried to do? What if there is more, much more? The Cash Foundation is proud to announce a new way to bring humanity forward through technology that brings humanity in line with the natural operation of the planet and universe itself. The new science and technology discovered and developed by the nuclear engineer Moran Kesh centers upon the use and control of magnetical gravitational fields. This new body of knowledge opens the road to hundreds of potential applications, which offer solutions to most of the fundamental problems of the world, such as water, food, environmental contamination, and shortages of energy. The Keshe Foundation is proud to unveil the Keshe Foundation Spaceship Institute. Nestled amidst the beautiful shores of Bari, Italy, the Institute is poised to become a central hub in the spreading of plasma technology and knowledge. With its state-of-the-art 21st century facilities, the Institute will be able to provide students and staff an immersive way to learn the plasma technology to be the leaders of the new generation of scientists and plasma engineers. The Keshe Foundation has opened the door to the world for peaceful usage of technology that is independent of the limited resources that are available on Earth. This is an understanding of how everything works together in harmony in our universe, and it applies to everything from the smallest to the biggest, from atoms to galaxies. We all are able to collectively work together in pursuit of knowledge, innovation, and solutions for our society. This learning environment is new to the world, where there will be no test to confirm your understanding. The knowledge of everyone will be respected and allowed to flourish in a nurturing environment. Hands-on testing and experimenting will be widely used in conjunction with roundtable discussions to bring all opinions and knowledge forward. Students will be introduced to a change in the ethos of working in collaboration. Students will experience firsthand how we share knowledge in a free and open manner. Graduating students are expected to share the knowledge they gain from the university within their respective communities and nations. All formal teachings, lectures, and presentations will be in the English language, with technology available for immediate translation. Kesh Foundation Spaceship Institute will be offering three-year executive master programs for undergraduate degree students and one-year executive master programs for graduate degree students in the following fields. Space Transportation, New Plasma Technology, Health, Agriculture, materials, energy. The health section is designed to make students able to live in space without the need to return to Earth. To this end, the Keshe Foundation Spaceship Institute has found processes for many diseases including ALS, cancer, coma, epilepsy, multiple sclerosis. Keshe Foundation Spaceship Institute will offer online teaching courses which will enable anyone anywhere around the world to enroll and increase their knowledge and understanding. Students will have the opportunity to direct their work towards commercial spin-offs and seek funding through the help of the Keshe Foundation. The access to the new science and new technologies is openly available for peaceful use to the benefit of mankind to make a better world today. Now you can be part of the changing world and the new knowledge. All commercial spin-offs are intended to be open source and patent-free. This is part of the core ethos of the Keshe Foundation and the Keshe Foundation Spaceship Institute. Keshe Foundation Spaceship Institute will have its official inauguration on April 21, 2015, with courses commencing soon after on May 4, 2015. 
The students of the Keshe Foundation Spaceship Institute will be the leaders of the future. We will make changes in all areas of space technology, science, medicine, agriculture, and energy. Anyone is able to apply, but acceptance is through invitation only. No prerequisites are required. We will be accepting approximately 250 students for the three-year executive master's program and 120 students for the one-year executive master's program. We welcome humanity's participation in the knowledge of the Keshe Foundation Spaceship Institute. Where does humanity go from here? That is up to you. Apply today. Okay, that was the promotional video for the KFSSI, as it's known as. And now we'll hear from Mr. Kesh of the Kesh Foundation Spaceship Institute and uh, see what he has uh, for us today. Uh, Mr. Kesh, are you there? I'm not, I'm not here. Oh, there we go. Am I unmuted now? Can I speak? Okay. Yes, I think uh, Vince has allowed you to speak there now. <laughs> no, thank you very much, Your Majesty. Um, good morning, good day to you. Thank you for joining us wherever you are, whatever time. And uh, during the day or night you listen to these programs. Uh, as part of the work of the Cash Foundation and uh, Cash Foundation Space Institute, um, today as we've done all the time in the past, uh, we tried if there is something important to bring into uh, public attention more than just being part of the teaching of the classes, we try to put it uh, on Thursday mornings. And today I think what we are about to discuss on uh, adding to the knowledge is important enough that it needs a whole session on its own. This is part of the structure of the Earth. We live with it. It's part of the way we live, but we've been ignorant to it, or we haven't understood the totality of it. And as we are opening the space, we have first to understand how our own home works before we get out. Where the things are, where is the kitchen, and where is the, what you call it, the bedroom and the sitting room. In reality, we have not understood this in the work of the planet Earth, and a lot of assumptions and mysteries have been built around it because the whole package never been together. We try to put and add slightly more to this knowledge today, and it more or less deserves to be on its own. So the knowledge adding part of the workshop today is about the structure of the planet Earth and how it works and how it's come to be and what we have that we have never understood. Before we do, as usual, we make certain number of uh, what we think is important to know uh, uh, as a part of the work of the Foundation. First of all, um, I have to uh, explain, as the knowledge seekers know, uh, as of today, Cash Foundation and Space Institute um, go into separate position, we have um, acquired and uh, we are opening as of next week the Cash Foundation Research and Development and Cash Foundation Technologies and Cash Foundation as a, a international organization offices and laboratories here in Valletta, which is about six kilometers from here, and the teaching arm and the research site totally separate from this week. This is important for us because we have got to the point of uh, development that we want to bring international scientists to work, but they don't need to be in the teaching and lessening sessions. So the two sides work separately, but if they need, they can join or add, or as the knowledge seekers um, break through new technologies or new understandings, the foundation, as we promised, will support the breakthrough. Or what you call the spin-off in commercial sense. So uh, the facilities now is being made available. We will release the what you call the all the details about the 
place and the position. We have all the facilities for flight tests. Uh, we have enough land facilities. We have uh, all the accommodations for up to about 15 a spin off within the next six months, eight months. Uh, so um, we are building what we structured ourselves for. And meanwhile, the new center will be what we call the center of excellence for space technology. Uh, we welcome any organization to collaborate with us. And as part of this, as some of you know, Sears Aerospace Group will be here next week. And if we come to final agreement, we'll announce the collaboration between the two. And on the other hand, when we open the institute, if you were here on the opening session, we promise that we take the technologies of third world nations and Africa first. And uh, in so many ways, to keep to our ethos, we have come to an agreement on an initial basis last night and we'll confirm it, and very soon we have uh, Ghana Speech Institute as part of the Keshe Foundation Collaboration Group. So we teach in Ghana directly to the scientists who are involved in the space and space exploration because Ghana has the institute, and there are um, some 19 scientists uh, within the institute who are developing further for development of the satellites and uh, uh, other things of the Space Institute of Ghana. So, as we promised, as of uh, next week, once we finish the final agreements, all the teachings of the Keshe Foundation is freely open in Ghana universities. Once, so any student in Ghana, in the scientific level and in the institute, can access the teachings freely. Uh, this will be followed soon with the South University of Sierra Leone, hopefully and then we develop into the other Af African nations. So not we collaborate with organizations in America, like C C John Cyril Group, we'll do the same with the Africans we keep our ethos to. So very soon in our teachings, as of next week, we will be sitting with our people from Africa, scientists that participate in the development and testing according the way we've seen in China. And at the same time, this is important because what we do here is important to be fed back directly into population that it can be used. There is a point which we raise today and we leave it as that and then we come back to it when the time is appropriate. Uh, as you know, last week I wasn't here because there was tests going on in Fukushima directly, which I had to be involved in personally in the laboratory, that we could get the best result. And as we have told you, we've been involved with Fukushima since last year in different stages of development. Even as we speak today, the sixth test, which is to do with tritium um, cleanup test, is going on. This is initiated by TEPCO directly themselves on the back of the test of the, uh, what we saw in uh, last Thursday with the soil testing. There is a point has risen, and as you know, Cash Foundation never leaves uh, things in uh, a position of uh, uncertainty. We make our point, and we expect the answer. Um, team of people in the background are the literally writing the papers, and in the coming days we release the paper. According to what we understand, TEPCO has used the technology of the Keshe Foundation in the past three months, and they have announced it through IAEA, International Atomic Energy Authorities, that they have managed to succeed to extract certain nuclear materials from the water contaminated uh, uh, 1,500 tanks plus on the hills of Fukushima. As we understand, and the report we have with the Italian Nuclear Center test, as a matter of respect, TEPCO should have informed the Keshe Foundation that they have used their technology before they announced it, that they have done the job and they cleaned up. So what this means, they have taken the technology, they have used it without 
allowing or letting us know and or because being successful they are carrying on with the following tests for cesium and tritium. This is not correct and we have made our point very clear to the, to the Japanese government in past 48 hours and to be correct within coming days Marco, headed with Marco and Stanley we release a scientific paper with all the communications with TEPCO that the technology should have been open and should have been announced and we should have been informed how it's been that they can build on the knowledge not just to be a private use for the Japanese government and I will make this very clear we have informed our partners in Japan we are not happy with this condition they are not happy with what has happened and we expect announcement by TEPCO we will not stop collaboration we collaborate because TEPCO there are few people but we are supporting the Japanese nation and this will stay the same if the phase 3 development was successful that in less than two months they have managed to extract the nuclear material specifically which they asked us for they asked us specifically to design, to develop a technology to specifically to take this material out and in past three years, four years they've tried everything they couldn't do it within two months of receiving the material testing they have achieved it this is what I call incorrect conduct and it has to be put right if international collaboration is to go on there is a question mark by the intermediaries between the Japanese government, TEPCO and Keshe Foundation that the intermediaries are withdrawing their support so this can damage or cancel the meeting of the 1st of July which has been arranged by the government and the Keshe Foundation they would like to withdraw because they see it as uh, dishonoring the name of the Japanese nation with the conduct of the TEPCO we have asked them to stay on course and till we release our document and then we pass the document to IEA at the highest level I will pass a copy of the document to my president His Excellency uh, Ayatollah Rouhani to pass on to IEA I have direct access to the offices we pass a copy to the office of the Prime Minister of Japan and we ask, we send one copy to the director of TEPCO to clarify the position <laughs> For three, four years, they've been trying to extract the stratum. They could not do specifically in emails which we released, as we did with the fraud with uh, Mr. Stephen Hawking. We, we released the papers. They asked us specifically to develop a technology for extraction of a stratum. We did. We delivered all the materials and immediately on the test even they would not allow our people and the intermediaries to take any notes in the conference when they meeting took place that what they achieved so this shows deception and I presume this is to do with the number of people in TEPCO and not with TEPCO as a whole but if this is the behavior of TEPCO there is a lot to be asked from the office of the president of TEPCO his behavior and his position if it's attainable because other scientists around the world will not collaborate with Japan if you are there totally to help a nation we give our knowledge free we give our technology free to world population but the others are not so generous as us so it means they might be and there's a possibility of deception by TEPCO using other people's technology and in fact what I wrote to the intermediary this puts a question mark on the honorability of the Japanese nation and their conduct. We'll await the result from the Office of the Prime Minister of Japan or TEPCO in respect to what the Japanese intermediary call a theft. A nation cannot steal. A nation which steals a gift is a thief by nature. So I don't think this is the application to the Japanese nation, but as we said, we will not stop the process. We are still planning, we are still developing. We are getting prepared for accepting the scientists from TEPCO here at the Keshe Foundation to further develop facilities for extraction of the rest of the residual material. 
I thank Marco for and Stanley and Elia for bringing uh, the paper together. It's been done very rapid way. And to support us, we release every single email communication, every secure lines communication in public line to defend our position that knowledge has to be free and has to be pointed to where it came from. And I thank you very much, and I thank our collaborators and partners in Japan who were appointed by the Office of the Prime Minister to negotiate between the two sides. And since the uh, past 48 hours, 72 hours, by release of this information about TEPCO has tainted the relationship between their partners in Japan and Japanese government. On the other hand, we have, we will make the second workshop of the health, which was released this week, to do with the development of the medical application and tools and the reactors in public. This is very important, first of all, to safeguard number of the cash foundation supporters in Belgium, because uh, they've been threatened by Mr. Delanois, the chief of police of uh, uh, Cortrec, with all sorts of things that he could get access to destroy evidence against his own criminal actions. So we deliberately did open the containers, not only to teach, but show what he's using to make threats, to put certain lives in danger. As a policeman, he has to be withdrawn from the office of the police of the court track till his criminal investigation by international police is finalized. He is using his position, not Italian, Belgium's knowing, to access information to destroy it against himself, not to self-discriminate. And this is the false use of the police power. And the same thing goes with the prosecutor of the court track who's supporting him as part of the structure of the Kingdom of Belgium with the ex-King of Belgium as head. So we make our point very clear in, in respect to our international condition. On the other hand, in the coming days, we will release further new technologies. These are technologies which I've kept, as we say, in the back pocket for years, which will change the whole process of the structure of the work of the foundation teaching. The same way as open the medical application, <coughs> I've been trying to teach in a very rapid way different aspects of the technology and understanding. To be able to understand the totality, you have to understand the work of the foundation of the work. One of the problems with us has been, we have not understood the totality of the work of our own home. What does this mean? This means that in the coming times of past centuries and thousands of years, as we have added to our knowledge, we have not in totality understood the work. So what we've done, we have made a lot of guesses. Part of this guess has been the operation and the interaction of what we call the source of the plasma of our solar system, the sun, and the working of our planet. In so many ways, I put the sun in a very small size because we consider it to be in a distance, but we try to look at the structure of the home. The home to us is Earth, is in totality. It cannot work, we cannot live, if we do not consider it in one piece. You cannot have a home if you don't have a roof. You cannot have a home if you don't have a basement. So a home is totality of one's place of existence. So if we get the sun, and we consider our Earth as our home, as a human race, we have not understood the work in this position, in this interaction, in this composition as totality of the part of the solar system. We are a, a speck of dust in a vacuum of universe. But still, it's home. It's where we live. It's 
where we feel comfortable, we try to understand. But scientists and other people over centuries and thousands of years have added bits and bits of information to allow us how to be able to live, but understand how we live. It's like having a home. You have a plumber who understands about the plumbing, you have a roofer, you have a guy who tells you how to put the roof together, you have a guy who does the bricklaying. Our scientists have been like the roofers and the plumbers. Each one has tried to add something in, you have. God knows, the Italian delegation is escaping in. Good morning, you're welcome. Next time, don't forget the credit card should be on the table. Yeah. So, we are trying to add to the knowledge in the correct way. As I said, as we have good plumbers and bad, bad plumbers, we have a good roofers and bad roofers, we have had good scientists and bad scientists. Scientists who did some work to support, and some people who guess, and their guess had to be supported backwards. So, part of the guessing, you got your, what you wanted? Thank you very much. He's a, without caustic, almond is dead. Uh, there is no, almond and caustic go together, hand in hand. So, it's the process we have to understand. The material we have to understand. We have to understand what the roof has got to do with the foundation. If we do not understand how to put a perfect foundation, the roof will be tilted. And when there's a slight wind, the roof will fall down and we blame ourselves. Our knowledge of our planet has been put on a very shaky ground. Extremely shaky, with a lot of guess, without any truth. Just, it has at the time been good to do, to satisfy, most of the time, in the past centuries, the condition of the living of this planet was added to, to fit into the structure of what we call path of belief. If it suited the church, the mosque, the synagogue, it was accepted. And if the scientist was close enough to pay good enough money to the priests, to the religious leaders, it was the correct way. And if it didn't fit what we do with them, we hung them on the cross. That's what we did. Any scientist who proved to be correct was more or less persecuted because it did not fit the abuse structure of what we call the religious leaders. Now with the internet, now with the expansion of science, we don't need the controllers of the soul because there are nobody but a bunch of thieves to suit their pocket. But we can serve our own purpose to be able to go into the universe, universal community, with a full understanding. It's no use you going outside trying to understand when you haven't understood what's happening at home. So, if we bring the knowledge in reality of what it is, we'll find out a lot of things are much more different than what we thought. I would like to make the red line the line of the upper atmosphere, where the sun shines and the gravitational magnetic field of the Earth and the Sun creates a very nice, it's not a line, it's literally tens of kilometers of bandwidth, of interaction of fields. The upper atmosphere is tens, hundreds of kilometers, because magnetic gravitational field of the Earth spans the universe. But the most interactive between the Sun and the Earth is tens, hundreds of kilometers. On this upper layer, because you have both gravitational and magnetic fields of different strength interacting, you get different conditions. You create different plasmas. And this plasma in this area creates its own condition of life. Because plasmas, as they reduce, some become light but some still gather together to become part of another process. So, if Rick could be kind enough, 
or wins and go on the NASA videos. NASA released a video some three, four years ago, looking from the space station down onto Earth. They took beautiful pictures. What did we see? In these pictures, we see a lot of entities moving, random and some organized. We see them going back. Wind, Rick, if you can pick it up, if you know where it is, because I remember going over it some times ago, we see these little entities moving, flying, going to one place, coming back. It's just like a mother. One of them keeps on going to the same thing, feeds, and he goes. It's like a little bird who's got a, what do you call it, a little chick at home. He goes, finds some energy, and comes, feeds it, and he goes away. You watch it. It's beautiful. It's at least a few minutes of this. So it means it had a process. It had to go to get something to go. So there is a structure of life which we were not aware of. Then we have what we call our very much patches of solid bed. These patches of solid bed have taken different shape. And this patch of solid bed have got filled up with what we call water. We call it our oceans, we call it our whatever you call it, the seas, the lakes. So now we have pieces of land mixed with pieces of water. But what we have done as human race, we have managed to occupy the land mass. This is us in different shapes. We crossed it, we managed to get to it. But when we come to it, the question is, we understand how they came about. They came about in very much, as I call, due to the friction of gravitational magnetic field plasma of the Earth and the Sun. It's like rubbing a hand, but big rubs of hands, big plasmas, they have both gravity and magnetic. They are decision makers. We came to exist out of where this interaction took place it created, at certain levels, what we call a nitrogen. Nitrogen in a gas state, in a plasmatic gas state, not nitrogen in a matter state the way we feel it as a gas. And in the process of creating nitrogen and interaction with the rest of the materials on this planet, on the upper atmosphere, due to friction and addition, on one side, nitrogen created carbon. On the other side, it created oxygen. But in the same process, we have hydrogen created and helium is created because these are frictions. And as part of the same process, we have what we call the light. So in this process, the structure has been if nitrogen, which is the interaction according to the gravitational magnetic field of the Earth, with the Sun releasing it, if there is more of, and it comes with instruction of others, has lost 14 to 12, it's become a carbon. If it's managed to gain the helium or residual oxygen, uh, hydrogen, has become the oxygen 60. So nitrogen is a balancer. It's the creator of either side. When the nitrogen and the carbon and the hydrogen, as gases on the upper level come together in the right order, they make what we call the amino acid of the man. The essence of the creation from the gas environment of this plasma of Earth. So what we call it, Mr. Cohen appears. But Mr. Cohen duplicate. But he has not got tangibility of physicality because it only involves the gas part, not the matter part of this entity. When the gas part comes in touch with the matter part or some of 
the hydrogen and the oxygen mix in a different way according to the condition, they created what we see as the water. So when the gas is converted in to the molecularity of the plasma, they became liquid. We see it as the waters of this planet. The waters of this planet come from the interaction of upper atmosphere, nothing to do with the Earth itself. Then, in this process, as the waters flew over the land, the land contains all sorts of things. Sodium, potassium, iron, copper, zinc. And in one part, when the process started, let's say if this was the lake in Africa, where all these amino acids and the waters with the right combination came together, one of the first interactions was that when the water, the amino acid, and iron, came together, they created the first, what we call, homoglobin, or first essence of life. Then, as different materials added to it, like copper, it created structure, muscles. As zinc and potassium joined in, it brought emotion, and it brought intellect that you could distinguish, you could recognize. So in time, the man came out of the water or where the fish was established because we all, doesn't matter what animal we are, we all came from there. And this is one of the reasons, as I always say, scientists say we are 99 percent, 0.5, 99.9 or whatever, the same as a monkey, or a mouse, or a pig. Because we all came from the gaseous in interaction with the matter structure of the planet. So now, you have become existing. You do exist. And don't forget, as part of the heat which is created, some of these materials evaporate into the atmosphere too. So, you have copper, you have iron in the atomic structure in upper layers. Plus, what it arrives, oh yes, the video is there. If you can see it, um, there are little friends which are moving in the background. If you stop that video for a while, please, that we can go with the teaching, we go back to that. Thank you very much. So, I noticed everybody is looking at the board, so I knew something is happening behind me. It wasn't Giovanni, he was already arrived, so it must have been something else. So, now what happens? You have the structure, but the, the solid area of this landmass has come in so many ways over cooling of the center upwards. So, you have a center in the planet. And when it has cooled down enough by the temperature according to the structure of its position of the Earth in the, what you call, atmosphere of the plasma of the solar system, these land masses have split, cut themselves into pieces, and what this is what they call different continents. So, now what we see is separation of continents due to the mass and motion of what we call here the lava. The hotter molten material within the structure. So, you have what I call your inner core, the Caroline core, whatever, but then you have the lava. In the process, of creation of the amino acid, the interaction of the amino acid 
with the salt, with everything else, this creature, or when the amino acid touches the salt and the metal floating in the water, leads to the creation of life, which is totally water dependent on what we call different kind of fishes. If you manage to become a land mass animal, you became what I call vertical walkers, horizontal walkers, anything you like. But if you landed as an amino acid in interaction with other elements of the matter state, you end up with different kind of fishes because you still carry all the amino acid and everything else. So now we understand why human race has a common denominator with the rest of the animals on this planet. Because we are all connected to Mr. Cohen. It's part of the structure of the atmosphere. The gases on their own can create intelligence, can create life. But with interaction with the material state of the planet, they have become part of the physicality of moving animals on solid part of their life, of this planet. The ones who can swim, stay fishes, the one who can walk the eye, have a long, they become land animals. But what has happened? There is a very big, important position to understand. Everything reaches a position of separation from the lava. So what has happened? Over millions of years, these, what we call, condition of creation and condition of coming together has led to a process where now us as a human being have become an expert diggers. We become very good diggers and we have started digging into this ground mass. We do it because we are looking for different version of the same amino acid in different combination in interaction with hydrogen, oxygen, or any other material. So we have managed to penetrate up to now 20, 30 kilometers in some cases to look for what is precious to us and what we call oil, or part of the Earth reserve of its own cycle of nitrogen. Let's open this up. Let's look what happens here. Or even, let's look at the fish. What happens here? All the amino acids which touch the salt, the sea, the water, the earth, the salt, the water, the land mass did not become human beings, did not become the cat, did not become snail, or in conversion, did not become birds. Some stay still in amino acid, state as a fat, and you all have seen this. This is not what we call theoretical. This is when you have your CO2 box, you put your copper oxide, you put your zinc in, and you put salt water, the same as the sea, you have collected the CO2 gas, and you have seen the creation of amino acid on the top. So all of you already are creators of life. You all, if you produced CO2 kits, if you produce copper oxide, if you produce CH3, I've already seen the amino acid. So you understand how easy the process is. You have created the condition. Nanostructure, single nanostructure, in combination with the amino acid from the air. All of you who've done it, you've seen the red blood, which was interaction with the eye. So, you have started understanding the process of life. So, what has happened 
Not all of these amino acids, which billions of tons of it, is continuously in touch with the salt and the water, becomes animal. Some gets absorbed, and the rest, in floating, do sink to the bottom. So, Mr. Cohen goes very far. I put Mr. Cohen in red. So, now we see him everywhere. In man, in fish, and as we have explained and you have seen, when you come to the state of being, you are not molecular entity in a matter state. You share gravitational magnetic field and you become a gas. You become a gas in a natural state interaction, which is only you become plasmas of material, which is one is oxygen, carbon, and nitrogen. So we see as one plasma. And this is what we call a gas. And when you come to this state, you are independent of temperature and pressure. Environmental pressure and temperature, because they are themselves magnetic field entities, get absorbed or get added to by the plasma of the GANS. So the GANS, instead of in this matter state, is temperature and pressure dependent. So you can live in a cold water, you can live in the hot water, you can live on the top, and in the recent past, we've seen scientists drilling in the deep whales find life. In the deepest part of the ocean, at the hottest volcanic positions on the bottom of the sea, we see life, which is surprising for them, and we see life in the oil wells in the deepest part of the earth. Because these are the same amino acids. Oil is an amino acid. Life at the bottom of the sea is an amino acid. These are the animals, the proteins, which manage to, not to become life on the upper layers, but they manage to seep to the bottom. But they still carry Mr. Cohen with them, because they are there. They are temperature and pressure independent. So what has happened? At this point, they managed to get through, through washing, rain, or whatever, seep through the gaps, and where there was a physical barrier, they've been collected. This is the physical barrier. We call them oil wells. We dig into them. They are water wells. But what about if there was no barriers, no solid point? What happened to Mr. Cohen? Mr. Cohen has managed, and he goes till somewhere he finds a barrier. No barrier. What does it do it? It lands in the lava. The same in the seeds. It lands in the lava because it just seeps through. Do not forget, it's mono, most probably plasmatic condition does not interact, it's a higher order, with a matter state, it's a lower order, so it's just like a water going through the sea, till you put a bucket on it. And if there is no bucket, the water carries on through. So what has happened? We've seen amino acid in the upper layer creating life, which we've seen with NASA confirming. We've seen in the gaseous state leading to life, the evidence is you, me, the dog, the cat, the fish in the sea. And when it sank through, it's become, well, now we see oil in deep drilling. And strange enough, they call it fossil fuel. They say the fossil fuel is going to run out. But, and it's all come, the other out of equation is they say all the fossil fuels has come from the remains of dinosaurs and jungles and the rest. 
Ask yourself a very big question. How many millions of dinosaurs should have died to have so much oil that we extract? 80 million barrels of it a day, day in, day out. Must have been a huge number of dinosaurs must have been stacked on top of each other. This is the reality. Because we never understood the process that the oil, what we call oil, the amino acid, is a production of the earth, continuous process, and not to do with anything to do with animals. Fossil fuel, according to one report, was built up in the American conference, and everybody grabbed it. Because the ignorance was the best thing to accept that we are all ignorant, so we accepted fossil fuel. Nothing to do with the fossil. Oil will be produced as long as this planet lives on mass tonnage. Now you understand it how? Every day. So oil companies have taken you. There's going to be a shortage. The price is going to be $140, $200. You've been fooled. Oil will never run out because now you understand the process. I can tell you there will be no oil tomorrow and I charge you $300. But you give me a bucket of salt and copper oxide, I create you as much oil as you want at zero cost. You can produce oil at home today. Cost you. The wires in there. If you have any cables, if you have a, let's say, a, a room you don't use in the house, just pull out the wire out, make yourself a lot of buckets, put all the copper wires in the caustic, make yourself a lot of free oil. You don't need to pay no oil company. And the beauty of it is, you don't need to refine it because it's pure. It's absolutely pure oil. You can even dictate what mixture you want. You want a diesel mixture? You want a unleaded mixture? Because now you dictate what you absorb. So those who are paying millions of dollars a day for oil refining, I'm sorry to say, as my ex-president Ahmadinejad said, His Excellency, we are an oil nation. We know soon the truth will come out. We don't need it, so let's develop the space technology. That's why I went to Iran. Even the oil nations at the highest level know this is a big scam. Now, all of you can produce, but there's going to be a problem. The way in America they tell you if you collect water, it's a criminal offense now. You can have as much. If you have more than a cup of water in your hand, you're a criminal according to some states now. Because even if you hold water in the bathroom too long that you don't use it, it belongs to the nation, to the government, they pay taxes on. So soon, now that you know how to make oil at home, and we've seen it, the Chinese in the last workshop, they brought the oil from the top, added to the other components to create what you wanted as food. So this hypocrisy of fossil fuel sold for 50 years, the time is over. So we show how the hypocrisy has taken hold. And if I said before, the religious people have had a lot firing the oil of fire of this price war because it suits them better than anybody else because they get a good contribution out of it. Because, for example, I said to you before in the teachings, years ago, when the British came to Iran, they said this is a filthy thing, we take it away, and you don't need it. So they took millions of gallons of oil out of Ahwaz and Abadan as a dirty thing, and now we know that dirty thing is they're stolen millions from Iranian assets. That's British petroleum. Thieves by nature, thieves by name. So what do they do? They have fooled us, and they paid the religious people to support that this is dirty material. So the two sides of criminals work together. What happens now? The amino acid has sank in the right temperature, in the right condition, instead of being human being, has become oil, you use it. The rest has escaped through. A new condition, a new environment, what you call the lava. As much as a new environment allowed it from in plasma state of intelligence to become matter state of intelligence human being, on the other levels became oil of different intelligence of other animals if the condition is right. 
when the same amino acid reaches lava, the right condition, the right position, it leads to what is the biggest fear of man, another style of life. Life in love. This exists. This is part of the structure of our life. We have ignored it because we don't see it, but life exists. The same as does on the sea, the same as does on the deep seas at hottest point, in the oil wells, on earth, in the air, and above us. So we are part of a structure of a, a stacking energy matter food level. So, but if you look at the higher level, life has taken shape without tangibility, but confirmation of existence using very low or balanced gravitational magnetic field. In this environment, life takes different position. Very strong gravitational magnetic field of the Earth, very strong magrav, both magnetically and gravitationally being near the core, similar but very powerful. Here we are on the balance point. Here we are at extreme strength. Possibility of life. 100% intelligence, much more intelligent than man, much more. Without a doubt, we are one of the most stupid creatures of this planet, and we consider ourselves as one of the most intelligent, because this way our ignorance satisfies our ego. So, if amino acid managed to get to lava, and in the quantities of millions of tons a day, the way they came together, and made fish, the way they came together and made man, they come together and make life. A life which can live as intelligence and does exist within the structure of the love. Some escape because there was not enough to friendly to become friend. So you create life even in what do you call the Caroline core, the inner core, the outer core, wherever this continuous conversion of energy of the plasma of the sun and the earth over billions of years have not managed to structure themselves somewhere they structure themselves, so life exists even in the center core of the planet, according to the strength of the gravitational magnetic field of the environment. If the temperature and the pressure is right, and is not over 100 degrees, matter state, human being, you go over 100, you burn, you become gases back into the same process. We go deeper, oil, if you give it different condition, you bring it into different atmospheric condition, it burns because of its condition. The same process. If we go up, we say the same. The low we go, the same. So there is one thing man has to accept. If you understand the truth, the way it's explained, and it's the reality which you see every day, we have never been alone. We have always been in the family of planet Earth without or partially knowing some of our neighbors. We are as much a cousin to the fish than the guy at the bottom. Because we all come from the same environment and we all created by the gravitational magnetic field of the Earth in interaction with the plasma of the Sun. So life is not exclusivity and intelligence. The ignorant intelligence is, has one exclusivity, and that's man's. And there's no other. Man is the only ignorant intelligence which has decided to cocoon himself in the nest of ignorance. But the process goes on. The process never stops. The same process, as you go between the sun and the earth, with different magnetic gravitational field of strength, there are different styles of life anywhere in the solar system, beyond it in the galaxies, and beyond it in the universe. 
because where you have gravitational magnetic fields, you have a plasma where it can organize itself and sustain and repeat itself, life exists. Its impossibilities, it does not, it has, it does, it depends what environment you give it for it to exist. Even though you are a amino acid, you're a microbe, you're part of a human being, you don't see the human being, you're a human being, you don't see the bigger structure. That's how the process goes. So, let us consider what is in our hand, what we understand. We started from the interaction of the fields, what we call the amino acid of the non-tangible plasma, but we saw their existence, we've seen it with NASA. We know we do exist, we are not a mirage from the same interaction due to the gases and the gas and the matter state interaction. We see the life in depth of the solid, we see the life in the depth of the liquid. What is not confined itself to this environment has become life in the lava, and what has not managed to come together to make a structure has sank further down in, according to the environment, has taken a new type of life. What kind of life would you like? This is going like this. So, the most weakest man has managed over millions of years to create intelligence to make clothes. Find a different way of food, to communicate, to talk, to understand, to have feeling. <coughs> so has done the fish. You see billions of millions of fishes all suddenly decide in the sea to go one way. Who says who follows? Have you ever been in the ocean, if you've been doing your scuba diving, if you've done deep sea diving? You find yourself, you're a fish amongst millions of fishes. They all come to have a look, what's this big fish doing here? Wherever you look, you've got hundreds of thousands of fishes around you. That's how we are. You're a fish amongst millions of fishes. So, what happens? How do they communicate? Is the voice, because we have chosen to be the weakest way, for us, the only way of communication, how do millions of fishes decide to turn right, to turn left? One knows there is a danger, and the rest follow. How do we send a dead fish across the oceans that another fish goes to eat it because it's his food? Now we have to accept a very harsh reality, and that is life exists in the lava section in the other parts of the planet too. It's been very hard to make it headline news when we see animal in the oil, or we see animal near volcanic eruptions in the bottom of the seas. But, as we know, most of these lavas, in different shapes and forms, manage to break through. Or, they have a permanent access as what they call volcanic eruptions. If you had the intelligence, and you have managed to gather intelligence in the level of a plasma, won't you have the intelligence to see what's below you, and what's above you? Has a man done the same thing? We go to space to see what's above, we go to the mountain tops to see what's happening there, we go into the bottom of the oceans and seas to see what's happening, we go in every hole and cranny on this planet to see what's above us, what's below us. So, I don't think it has been any different for our amino acid friends on the lava thing. They are more intelligent than us, they are far more intelligent than human race, so they do make excursions, they do live a highly intelligent structured life in their own environment. Whales do, fishes do, man does, worms do, even a mole does. So, 
who are these? Who are these structure of elements, of fields, whatever we want to name them to satisfy our own ignorance ego. But the reality is, now that we go into space, we cannot ignore this. We cannot ignore single existence of the man to be the only intelligent. First of all, NASA has shown us there is more intelligence without physicality. We see the video. Oil companies and scientists confirm life at the deepest points they can get to. Now we have to set aside our ego and our ignorance and accept, because it's the reality, life exists in other levels. From the center of the earth to the center of the universe, at every level, there is a style of life which suits the being to confirm his existence and guarantee his existence. So, if such a little gravitational magnetic field has led to the king of animals himself, a man, can you imagine what intelligence the one has in the center? Even beyond the imagination of the man. It can divide faster, it can stand higher strength, so it works in a higher dimension magnetic field of strength, and if he has that much intelligence, and he knows where is the door of the house, you think he has never been out? He has never paid a visit to see what's happening on the roof? You think man is the only one who has walked the face of this planet? Maybe this intelligence cannot stand life on the surface, but it can stand life in a gaseous and a plasmatic state because it's part of its own structure. So, life do exist. We have entities which are highly intelligent, which do make excursion, and sometimes when you have friends, as I explained in the teachings, when you have a high intelligence, you see of the same. Wolves with wolves, birds with birds. So, we being the wolves and the birds, free of the shackles of the tangibility of the matter, do go exist, do exit, do travel the space of the universe, most probably much more than we done, we're trying to do as a human race. And when you go into space, you see friends, you invite friends home, come and see how are they? That's what we do. I live in Japan. I invite you when you come to Japan, come and see me. And the other guy says, I know one guy in Japan. I go to Japan to see how it is. And you go and ring the bell. You remember I met you in New York? You told me, I've come to see how you live. It's the same with the rest of the universe. And this is one of the reasons, if you go to the teachings I explained, we see entities, flights, in and out of volcanic eruptions or volcanoes. It's an easy entry. It's very hard to go through this hard rock, but it's already an entry. Welcome home. This is the way home. Paved directly to where you want. And most probably, when a man intelligence is extended to understand, when we go down, when we manage to access the lava, where we make a gravitational magnetic field system, which is a matter of weeks, some of you will do, you will be able to create a magnetic field barriers that the entity will never touch your structure. You can go into the deepest ocean, the hottest points in the universe. You shall visit as much as you want to go to the moon, to the center of the earth, to see who our friends are. And most probably, there are civilizations which have managed to organize themselves that they have advanced enough that they manage to find a way collectively to go in and out of the volcanic eruption. And they can invite friends in too. So, you're not the only aliens, Armand. Now we understand, once we put the limitation and the shackles of our own ignorance away, the life in the universe is absolutely beautiful. You go to a zoo to see a lion, how many times do you think these guys have come to see 
the real true line of this planet, the man. Tears, destroys, and calls himself the most intelligent out of his own ignorance. How much do you think when they invite friends, they say, do you want to go to the zoo to see the animals? They eat each other and they kill each other? Let's go, Middle East. There they know exactly where to go. Now is Syria. Tomorrow is somewhere else. They start never stop eating each other. The funniest thing is, when the animals eat, they're hungry, they kill another animal. They start kill and drop and they go. So it must be very a bunch of them. It's a habit of wasting of life and everything else which is a habit of the man. How many times do you think we've been laughed at? And they have people who tell them and they believe what they are told. You've been a bunch of robots controlled by a bunch of idiots called world leaders. Because to satisfy their own meager ego, to be able to prove they are somebody and they are actually nothing. Seven billion population of this planet is not even a speck of dust, not even counts as anything existing in the world of universe. This is what I said. You want to bring world peace, you show how little the guy is. He thinks his arrow is very strong, but he doesn't know there are guns and bullets. This is how British controlled Africa. They made the skirmishes. Africans only had was an arrow if they can throw it as much as, and that time British had little guns which goes another 20 meters further and they thought they were very powerful. And they slaved the nation, they slaved the continent, just because of that. And in fact, our intelligence is nothing more, and the most advanced tools we have is nothing even the arrow, is a stone age in the world of universe knowledge. It's not even a stone age, we just found something we don't know what to do with it. We call it nuclear bombs, we call it God knows whatever we like. So, to make something clear, a bunch of idiots been killing each other for nothing, for thousands of years. For what? Just to be in a gas which is converted by accident and has become a race which continuously kills and does nothing but destroying the soul. Two choices. Do we destroy this planet for the idiocy of a few or do we do something else? We change all the idiots and we keep the planet clean. I say, get rid of the idiots. Very easy. We don't need to kill. Because if we kill, we are back the same as the humans. But the humans have a little piece of thing which controls with the plasma. We all know how to control that little midget. We can create this. But the problem is, it's in their genes, it's in their DNA. The next one born will do the same. So man only does things if it's become his habit by nature, which is written in RNA. We have to make one thing very clear for world peace. Make man to, to literally vomit, to die when he smells blood. It's very easy. I can make you to get sick of the sight of blood. A lot of women do when it comes to menstruation. They go sick. So, we know the process. No man will kill a single animal. Or, the sight of death becomes so frightening that no man wants to see a dead body. Which one is easier? I say we go for the blood, because the scent goes miles away. If it's a physicality, you come and see it close. If we produce a system, now you have the knowledge. These are not theories anymore. You have managed to bring the gases from the universe and convert them into amino acids at your will. You have managed to create gases which gives life to humanity and to the plants. You create a CO2, 
which gives life to the vertical animal, we call it plant. So, why not add a little bit to it, and I can tell you exactly what it is, and make man who hates the smell of blood. You will not eat another animal. You will not eat and kill another person. Life becomes so miserable that you try everything to be perfect. You don't harm nobody. The peace becomes at home because then you have to be at peace that you don't step on nobody. Can you imagine you step on an ant and he stinks? You won't touch the ant. You find a way to satisfy him to live somewhere else. The same with the bees and the mosquitoes. This is the solution. Or do we go for a psychological depression and make man be afraid of another man? That you don't want to see a man. When you don't want to see a man, you won't kill a man because you're too afraid of him. And if you make man timid through what we call, as you've seen, the structure of the soul, it'll be very effective. But then man in the universe becomes subordinate, and it's not correct. Because when you see an alien, you run away. You don't want to be in touch with it. Then the problem is, how do you make to create another child? It will be the end of the race. So, what is an option? We call the 21st the process of day of peace. And everybody is waiting for a day when we're going to bring a satellite with the permission of the government to stand still, or we're going to bring a ship down, working, the non-working condition. What about the easiest way? Thousands of you, I'll give you the code, make what you're made of horrible thing to see and a smell. Blood. But the problem is if you cut yourself, you die too, because the smell of it will kill you. Maybe that's the best way. You don't ever carry a knife. Because now you saw something last week which you could not believe. And the most beautiful people in China, they showed us. They put a melon on top of the water. They put the amino acid, the copper oxide next to it, and the water taste smell of watermelon. Would you like that to be done to your psychological point in your brain? You all rely on drinking water, you all carry the amino acid, and the container is the atmosphere of this planet. You're so vulnerable to be destroyed, you don't even imagine how vulnerable human race is for abuse. The king of animals is actually is so busy that he doesn't see it, it can get stumbled on. And with the grace of God, up to now, others haven't interfered with this animal. Stop this man. A king, a president, a farmer, a man in the back of Africa, you carry the amino acid, and we know your CO2, and you live in the moisture of this planet. What would like me to get you to smell? Watermelon, roses, or blood? That you can't even breathe the air of this atmosphere of this planet. As I said, this planet stinks so bad from the blood that it goes all across the universe. Oh, that's nothing to do. This is to do with this computer. The transmission on the live stream does not stop. So, the truth is, you thought you've been alone. You've never been alone. You thought you are the king of crea creation. In fact, you are one of the bottom rank because you materialized. Now you are in a lower state of matter than anything else. Understanding that the plasma starts from the strongest 
And as you become weakest, it becomes matter state. You're somewhere here. These guys are somewhere here, and these guys are somewhere here. Both in the strength and intelligence. So, what would you like? I give you a choice. It takes me less than one minute. Go to the lab and make every man on this planet to vomit with the smell of blood. Because go on your meters, call your what do you call it? Weather stations. They tell you today temperature is twenty and humidity sixty percent. I got my cup. Water. Humidity sixty percent. What would you like me to add on the top? A smell of hate, a smell of peace, or rotten blood, rotten egg. You taste it. I know how to do it. Because don't forget the law of physics. Law of physics, your physicists say the gas takes the shape of its container. I give you order, which is a gas in the crystal structure, I can make you stink anywhere on this planet. I walked you into a trap. Now is your choice. Do or die. 21st of June. You decide. I've got you by such a string that you lot don't know when I pull, you're all finished with one thing. Not with life, but with behavior. We will not touch life. Life is sacrosanct. But animal behavior can be adjusted. But the problem is, once I take the watermelon away, you lot go back to the same stupid habit. Unless you correct the habit of the man. I gave the government time. 21st of September is your deadline. Three months to find a way. As I said, whenever there has been a peace walk, a peace talk, people went marching, people went shouting, they went to church, devotion, time, and the rest of it. Not this time. 21st of June, you give from your souls that you elevate the rest, that they reach the state of peace. I have no mercy on the President of the United States, but the kingdoms of anywhere. Most probably, I go for the presidents first to show the others. I put a call to the White House two days ago. Message is very clear. Stop the wars, or we don't stop anything, we just stop your breathing. You want, what would you like? Horse manure? Or would you like a smell of roses? In the White House, in Kremlin, anywhere you like it. Because the gas takes the shape of its container. It's sealed by the solid structure and the water. And it's sealed from the top. Atmosphere of the Earth takes one molecule to cover it. I always said in my teachings, one single cell of carbon can cover the span of a solar system. It doesn't need much to give you the order of Minya. Do it naturally, we support. Don't listen, we enforce. You choose. Because if I touch your soul through your emotional part, and the American intelligence guys who came to the Sansana, they know exactly what I talk. The guy stands in one corner and says, there's not much noise. He walks two meters aside and says, so noisy. If I can do that, I can reach your soul the same. It's not we are going to build systems. We already possess the system. So, I give a direct call to the White House. Your Excellency President Obama, 
your excellence Professor Boutin, move or I make you to move toward world peace. Very simple. And I tell you one thing, there is a second one in line if anything happens to me. So my demise will not help you. It just brings it up automatically. So now you see what I teach this today. It's the reality to understand how simply we can reach the whole lot of bunch of murderers called human race once it's given the opportunity. So it has to be changed in essence. In the amino acid, in the conduct, in understanding the reason there is no need to destroy because now you have enough knowledge to have whatever you like. I make the Queen of England to Queen Floors, if that need be, to show there is no need for kingship and queenship. The same goes to Vatican and the same goes to the Islamic leaders. Come to arrangement for a peace or you will find out you have no choice but to serve and clean floors. You understand the totality. What is the next step? And something which is very important for you to understand is the reality that while you've been animals and you've been destroying the race, killing each other like ants or killing each other for nothing, the man of the space have been on this planet. The man of the space have seen the dignity of other lives and intelligence on this planet. You think they have abandoned the man because of some idiots? You call them UFOs, they come and take the real estate. You have the most beautiful, disgusting real estate which is tented with nothing but blood, has worth nothing, nobody in the universe. You know the story of Christ, walking on the street, the guy is there, flat body on the street, and they're giving him the order of roses, they're bringing the most beautiful scents. He says, what does this guy do? He says, he's the guy who digs holes for shit holes, shit pots. Just bring him a cup of shit, that's what you understand. They bring a cup, the guy stands up. You smell it, we give it to you. How do you want it? And you think the others don't walk the street? Man never been abandoned. It's just man has never been got in touch because you don't want to teach the children of the space the animal behavior of the man. So you keep away because if they come in touch, they learn the same thing, we have mayhem in the space. So, if you thought you have been left alone, you're very wrong. You've been kept under observation, and now is the time to be left out of the guarantee. We're going to let you out in pieces if you learn how to behave. So, and if you think these guys who have the intelligence and the knowledge, and these guys who have the intelligence and knowledge, has been ignored by the universal community because of the idiocy of man, you have a long way to come. You're back to your own ignorance. You talk, I explain how you see what you call the cigarette, like crafts. I explain how it works, the way they works, and why they are needed to sink into it. And you only see it around volcanic areas. Guests come, guests go. Your observer. You've been ignorant observer, now we open the door. The whole knowledge is given, the whole support system is given, the whole structure to keep the lifestyle the same is given. It's you who's got the choice. And your deadline sits from this Sunday. The time clicks for 90 days, and after that, Breathing will be very difficult for the men who choose the path of killing. 
don't forget, as a human race, there is a very big weakness in the structure. I taught you everything from the health, to the food, to the energy, to motion. You have the blood, you have the neurosystem, and you have a limb. And when the right things comes in the right combination, becomes the cell of your heart, the cell of your brain, the cell of your toe, with emotion. You have everything. I just need to send enough through the emotion side for you, if you don't carry the gravitational magnetic field of killing and death, not to smell nothing, and the one who carries animosity will smell the odor of manure. So, nobody can say I'm a man of peace when he carries a gun on the side pocket. So, those presidents, those kings who talk about world peace and plan mayhem in the background like Vatican does every day, my God, you popes, you've got a long way coming in the next 90 days. The time's clicking. Ayatollahs, rabbis, Jewish, Muslim, any religion. Religions don't exist because they've done nothing but to save their own pocket for their own status and abuse of children. And the same has been with the presidents and the kings. So, the both side of the control is gone. It's for every man to be correct, to deliver the correct behavior, to live in a correct structure. So, you've got 90 days from 21st of June. And I promise you, I go for the leaders first. War leaders will smell the blood first. We will not touch you physically. We will not touch you emotionally. We just let you smell what you create every day too much of. Hate, murder, blood to line your own private pockets. So, this is the description of the earth. Life exists in every structure depending on what element you add, you add different aspects to it. Hemoglobin, the structure of the muscle, the structure of the brain, material to be able to convert and sexuality and behavior. You are nothing but a bunch of coincidences, same materials coming together. Because this planet happened to have it in this combination. The physicality has given time for the solid state to interact with the gases. And is that the most horrendous thing ever seen in the universe, in the shape of two-legged creature which does nothing but destruction. So, you choose, we deliver. And the good point is now, the Chinese know how to give you the smell of melon. Be careful they don't make a mistake and put manure in there. We understand? So, 21st of June, I've asked for a meeting of the core team, not to pray, not to do marches, but to go to your soul to give freely that you elevate the soul of these guys that they cannot smell the smell of manure when it comes because they pass the point of killing. And I said, and I'm very open about it, I take a challenge from any president or any king on this planet. You're too weak to be handled. We just don't wipe you out. We just give you so much love that you don't smell the manure anymore. And when you don't smell the manure, 
you don't order any wars and you won't smell any blood. Maybe they come and volunteer to be first. They've got 90 days. We shown the power of technology in Fukushima for a specific reason. We have shown the correct conduct with sharing knowledge openly because knowledge of universe is free for every being in the universe. So all the shackles of control is out. The process is very simple. What do you need the physicality of the man to go in the space? Now you've taken the habit of killing out of and you carry the soul of the man into the space. Then wherever he lands, according to the condition, he decides to be a fish, a man, or a highly intelligent being himself. Because the base is the same amino acid. And if you need a spaceship to go, it means you haven't developed to understand the full structure, as I said, of the use of the soul of the man. So, let's play the game from this Saturday. Kill as many as people as you like, if it's your habit, by this Saturday, 12 o'clock Sunday, our time starts. 90 days to 21st of September. Let them kill. They can kill as many as they like. I will not say a thing. But I teach enough Cash Foundation supporters that enough of you who are real true peace seekers will implement it. So it's not just me anymore. It's thousands of you who already know what to do. Just go to Chinese and understand the use of the amino acid as a common denominator in the structure. Next time, when you make it, make sure you put a blood next to it too. And you see, how will they smell it? And rot the blood. See how they smell. Very easy, connect it, and put this rotten thing in the star formation free plasma and see who will smell it. Now you all know how to start thinking. You are a true man of peace, you won't smell because the field of strength is above you. If you are wearing the jacket of a priest but you're a rapist and a murderer and a pedophile, you already smell the blood of the pain, you will feel it. If you are a president, you will not escape from it because somewhere down the line, you have killed someone. Otherwise, you don't get to that position. And if you are a king and a queen, you murdered enough to keep your monarchy, it's worth nothing anymore from now on. Because a man in China who is peaceful will dictate his term. So, a lot of you thought it was a very free talk. And a lot of you thought it was just a simple teachings for the past few weeks. But with the open teaching and being open for the past year and a half, what we promised, we delivered in the spring of 2015. It's been written and now it's delivered. So you choose as a human race which way you want to go. You want to smell the roses of the universe or the manure of the man. Because if you choose the roses of the universe, you will receive the knowledge and the intelligence of the universe the same way as you receive the order. You all be enlightened in the same level at the same time that you don't need to do this mayhem. And I'll tell you something very simple. You know, when you're in a classroom, the teacher punishes one child for the rest not to do the same mistakes? Man is the child. We'll teach that the rest of the universe will learn. And I kept on telling you for a long time, we talk 
to the door or the wall to here, because we can always change the door. Those who cry for peace will see if you start crying on 21st of September from the smell of many more. Let me know if you are true peace lover. He won't touch me. I'm not from this planet, as I've been told. My chemical testing in the German laboratory says I'm from where? Planet? Planet Zeus. And so will be the member of the Keshe Foundation court. They will not be touched. Their life is sacrosanct. So, you see. Understand the physical interaction, and then you understand the stupidity of intelligence. Anywhere in the universe where you have gravitational magnetic field of two entities interacting, you get residual, which that residual, if is gathered the right way, leads to life. Leads life in a way of being able to replicate. <coughs> this is what you call, from here to here, the aura. And the man has, from here to here, his aura too. So, even your life while you walk, your aura or the interaction of your gravitational magnetic field with the Earth's gravitational magnetic field leads to creation of life of a lower order, the way it has done between the Sun and the Earth. And would you like that lower order carry the same shameful behavior as the aura, killing, destroying, because it goes down the line. Life does not stop with the magnetic gravitational field, the strength of the man. Man is nearly at the bottom, but even that, there are more bottoms to the bottom. So, if this upper rods in the cart, the rest do so. Because the stronger disinfectants. So, understand the totality. Would you like to show the video from NASA for you to see your brothers above you who you've been eating and inhaling their excrement and you call it air? Rick? I think they disappeared into planet Zeus. Oh, we're um, here. I'm here. I've landed. Um, now, which which of the I videos? Hope you still have good blood. There's uh, one one video that uh, Russian cosmonaut tells what NASA will not, and there's another one. Um, alien creatures. Uh, alien creature swims past the International Space Station. Um, well, us, whatever it is, we've got to believe the Russians or the Americans. They both lie anyway. <laughs> okay, well, let's see what the Russians have to say first here. Let me see. Let me get that lined up. Uh, just a second here. Can you open this, Marco, the full screen? Try to make it into a better screen. Okay, um, let's see here. The American one is the one when they lost the cable of a few kilometers. While they were videoing it, they, they could not avoid recording the reality. Oh, I see. The tether one that has that in it. Okay. Um, the antenna, they lost that antenna, a few kilometer antenna, and they were trying to video it. 
I'll get that one lined up while we uh, have a look at the other one here briefly. This is from the Russian space. You see the structures, if it's taken long enough, they repeat. These are entities which exist as a plasma without tangibility. Pardon? This is um, taken in a position that, don't forget, at different levels in the upper atmosphere, there are different sizes because of the condition. And if you look, some of these have a repetitive condition. They leave, they go, they come back. It's like your mother feeding. Some others come, some others go. It's like us human beings, traveling, moving. These are not dust particles. Dust doesn't exist at that level. Okay, uh, we can put up the, let's see, where is it here, the tether incident, as it's called. Yeah. There is another one which is a very long one. You see, they shape, they come, they visit, they even pay a visit to the, to the, what do you call it, the antenna, to see what it is, if they can have something from it. The strange thing is, some of these, especially the hollow ones, move in twins. It's like a couple. It's not a coincidental. So, now, NASA has shown, you can stop that, thanks very much. Now, NASA has shown your upper brothers amino acid, because they still carry amino acid in a different form, in different interaction. So, how you do it, how you understand it, how you analyze it, in a way, according to gravitational magnetic field strength, pardon? Lost video. Have you lost the video? Or has the picture gone? No, video is good. Video is good. So, because it says knowledge structure workshop, oh, there I exist. That's the ugly face of the truth. So, according yeah, to your gravitational magnetic field strength of your environment, you appear in different states and different type of intelligence. You cannot ignore life in any shape, in any strength, and you cannot destroy life in any strength or any shape. So, what the whole purpose is, do not destroy, because don't forget, you are yourself part of the system that can be destroyed. 
the process is not to stop you fighting and killing, because if you make any mistake in the space, you'll be dissolved in a new environment. What would you like to be? So, if they had the intelligence to ignore you for thousands of years, they have the same intelligence to destroy you in seconds. But nobody ever destroys nothing. We we'll leave it till the intelligence reaches the point of maturity, at least at 3% of the population, and then we the interact. And now, 3% of human race have that intelligence. I hope some of you are part of the 3%. Matter state is irrelevant. The state of the soul, which is unconditional to matter, which can travel the space of universe, is important. Knows no dimension, has no measure, and it gives and it doesn't take. Killing is taking, and that is not allowed. When you enter space, I told you the, the language, the method, line of communication, then you understand it's very simple. As long as you give, you shall receive. Because it's a very simple process. It's both magnetical, which is giving, and gravitational, which is receiving. So, the question comes down, to what would you like to see? Because if you can tune to any strength within your amino acid, you will see different type of life according to the environment you exist. So when you go in space, man, a high speed, low speed, high temperature, low temperature will never change. But the only thing is which and where in your magnetical strength you want to see and what you want to see. And as I said, life is like a recording. I explained this yesterday. The history of a man and the abuse of man is recorded by the man himself in his RNA. And we shall play. We know how to do it. You just found out how to ignite the sense of a smell. Very soon, we of you will understand how to ignite the sense of emotion in the recording of the RNA. And then we see if did Christ got crucified and who was the real Pope. We shall see if Muhammad ever killed a single person, and we see why they are killing in his name. And then we understand the rest in so many ways. The history of a Buddha, and the one, the rest, and beyond. We will not touch. I always told you, a man's life is well recorded and it will be played. Now, you are all the recordings, and you play in time. All the chit chats in the corridors of what they thought it was hollow power will be spoken. And then we know who really killed who and what was the reason behind all these wars. But we play not the last first, we play what's going on now first. Because if we know what's happening now, we don't blame who started yesterday. We know who's doing it today. I tell you, they start digging and making soundproof, groundproof, microwave-proof, underground rooms that you cannot reach their soul. But unfortunately, they haven't heard about Professor Miles. You know his theory? Scalar waves? We go in. There is no limitation. I like the man. He's a very nice gentleman, it's Professor 
is one of the geniuses of the century. So, we work with his gravitational system. And then we listen through the same channels what they are planning for who they are planning. There will be a sleepless night in Washington and in Kremlin tonight and in the Buckingham Palace for the murders they were planning and they are planning and they are trying to do to have more of nothing. The strange thing is, you know these world leaders, they call themselves world leaders, we sit here with Saddam and the others. When you catch them, they find a rat hole to hide in. We know where we found Gaddafi, with so many murders, and we know where they found Saddam, in rat holes and tubes, exactly like a mole. The kings and the queens and the president of today, they wish they can find a rat hole because they would not even get that chance this time. Because wherever you are, we know the number. The telephone number is a soul address. All I need to do doesn't need area code. Anywhere in the universe, you'll dial it. So, I don't do it. Cash Foundation knowledge seekers, when it comes to 21st, make the cut. Put amino acid, put the copper oxide CO2 to reach both physicality and the soul, the emotion and put what you think is right. And then place it in your free plasma. And give from your soul the true meaning of peace. It will touch the soul of every man on this planet. But please do not use any manure. No manure, not yet. Maybe Every 21st of June, for a given time, you're allowed. At least give them a taste. Put it in, take it out. <laughs> you see how many people will shout out of your neighbors. Ah, this thing. Oh, that was the guy. No place for you on a spaceship. You think it's a joke. You start playing it. But be careful, you're not the one who's shouting. If you are strong enough in your belief in peace, make sure it's real. Because if smell is so horrendous, you won't even get a chance to remove it. You've got to live with it with your own crimes. So, let's play and let the game start from 21st of June. No guns. No arms, no harms. You decide. One by one, each part of this planet, you have come up with different solutions, but part of the same package. Jigsaw is nearly complete. Would you like to play? Be careful with the Armenians. Huh? <laughs> I don't think there are many true Americans would like to play this game. And I don't think there are many Romans would like to play this game. And definitely I know there are not many Iranians would like to play this game. The hand is full of blood. The ones in the leadership of each nation have killed enough and the different names are religions that they will call me a terrorist. And what they call it? I will become a terrorist because it terrorizes the presidents. But now they terrorize themselves out of the terror. But they know a Chinese guy very soon will try pig experiment. Have you ever passed a pig house? It's things you can't pass. You say, if this is smell of melon, 
what about this? And if it's there, what about if I put it there? So we will see. The strangest point is you're all in it. So you find a solution for totality. And do you know why you're all in it? you are all been eating animal flesh. So, none of you will have mercy. Like a kebab? Don't help. Just be careful you don't vomit. It becomes a vertical. So, change the habit. Live a peaceful life. The universe is your oyster. Carry on with the habit. You don't have much more time. 90 days is good enough. And then we extend it to one day a month. Not just because of the peace, because it's not so bad that nobody will have time to carry a gun. Would you like to sit in the shit pot in the tank where you can't even breathe? You go out to smell more fresh air, but the air is with you, not with the air. We do it for two days. Then we do the smell of death for three days. And Next time, you choose. You want a rotten carcass, or would you like uh, the smell of road? The way the road map is set for peace is so well calculated that you can't even imagine. It's just turning the smell a little up every month. Today, it's just... Have you ever lived in Flanders? In Flanders, is a very good habit. In Flanders, they are such a small country that they have a lot of pig farms and everything is indoor and they do nothing about it. And when the wind blows, the whole of Flanders gets the smell of their pig house. A few years ago, three, four years ago, it was so bad when it turned into England, the whole south of England was smelling everything which was coming from Belgium. Yeah, it's in the news. Now, would you like it to go to all across the world for how many hours would you like it? And then we can increase the strength by the end of December. Would you like to sit in Christmas in 2016 that you cannot do but vomiting? Christmas dinner is, means nothing. Very easy. In a very, very simple English, I make you to eat your own Start talking peace, start living peace. You have enough time to organize yourself that no family suffers because of the change from arms to tool of peace. We support. Um, and I've been talking for days. To bring employment through the new technology into America, not only China. Here in Italy yesterday, even I was sick two days ago from hospital, I sat with the Italian negotiating how are we going to bring manufacturing of the new technology into Italy that it creates jobs? There is a lot of investment coming into foundation in numbers you can't imagine, but the foundation is the humanity, not the cash foundation. I spent a lot of time negotiating, finding ways, but now I had enough. It's easier way to do it this way. But after September 21st, you choose, we put orders on the table, you smell, you decide what's going to be 21st to the 2nd of September smell. A little bit, or we dilute it, a little bit more. No roses. I won't do it. I tell you how to do it. 
and the ones who are the true peace lovers will do it simultaneously all over the world because they want to enforce peace. We don't march through street, we march through the nose of people and through their soul. If you are a true man of peace and you mean peace, 21st of June, we shall, 21st of September, we shall meet. There will be no crew and no ship army carrying equipment because they cannot stand this stench. You disarm the most advanced aircraft carrier. No crew to run it. Can you imagine? Fighter plane going. You never been in a plane where the sh what do you call it? The cable has been damaged and the smell goes through the plane and you have to sit down. You can't go anywhere. You can't open the door. I've been there. The crew, the man. The waiter, the air hostess, the guest, everybody smells the same smell. The only difference is a private jet has been changed to the final there. Ah, you decide. On 21st of September, people around the world, we give it time. If we don't achieve, we all produce the same order. And see which one of us can stand the Chinese and which one of us can stand the African. I tell you, you don't want the Africans. I lived there long enough. So, it's not me anymore, and you know what to do. But there's a small click left, I'll give it to you on 21st of September session. Because if anybody tries, now as you see, it doesn't work, because you haven't got the last. But if you smell the melon, surely try this time to put some manure and try to drink the wood. It's very harsh, but it's the only way we could manage to get man to change the course. There is no other way. How do you reach 7 billion idiots? Because this is not a habit of the President of the United States, killing. It's the habit of the man in the jungle of Africa. It's the same with South America. How many people are you going to touch? How many people are you going to send? How many missionaries you send to create peace, but the missionaries will use the people? This is the easiest way. You smell the melon, now I smell the next one. And total cost is one dollar. One dollar, not even one dollar. If you can create a little bit of current between your plates, you can make your copper oxide, you can make your CO2, and you make your fat, and you can start smelling the whole universe. You thought I'm going to fight single by single? No. I let you fight amongst each other till you decide amongst who's going to be the peaceful one. The one who has a gun can shoot 25 kilometers. Intercontinental missiles can kill a few thousand people at maybe halfway around the earth. One bucket of manure can reach the whole 7 billion in one go. Which one would you like? More powerful than intercontinental missiles. You know, more Americans died in Vietnam out of the bamboo than actually the guns. You know that. Yeah? You know how. Pardon? All the all all Vietnamese did broke a bamboo, put it in their own excrement, and planted it in, and they ran. They knew where they were. Americans thought they got them. They just got the scratch, so the bamboo went in. The infection is so bad. The bamboo shoot this time is your cup of life. 
This is a true cup of life. Today's talk will be remembered for the rest of, rest of human race. The point man is given to choose between war and peace. Then you decide. And the thing is, I didn't do it. A man from Georgia has come to make it. A man from Australia has come to show it. Americans have come to put soul into it. We got the man from Croatia who wants to do it. The Italians are pushing it. The Chinese who are making the scent. And you don't want to know the rest. Cash Foundation support runs into millions around the world. And they all, if they are true colors of the peace, just need three. Actually, more than one is enough. Depends on the humidity and the strength you put in it. The closer you live near the coastline, very humid, you smell more of it. Don't forget, it works by humidity. And if you make it 100% dry, you die. So you need to breathe the air. You need the moisture, you will smell the roses. I speak harsh, very direct, but this is how the world leaders understand. Your leadership is finished. It's time to start the process of peace. You are there because we allowed you, not because you are there because of your position. So, do you want to wipe out the earth? Or do you want me just to wipe nothing? You decide. Because in this process, none of you will kill none of you. But you force each other not to smell the death. I said, not in my time, not in my term, no soul shall be harmed. But I didn't say the physicality will not be put at the level of the soul. So now it's time for you to arise. Rise the dead to meet the soul, you achieve the promise of Christ. So the dead are walking, but the soul is not dead. So, are there any questions? Don't tell me when the deadline is 21st of September. Question. Your microphone. You're going to kill yourself. Faster? He's going for a smoke. You had said that in because of man's uh, DNA that we have sort of come to rely on having meat and that it would take 30 some years to change our diet. How can we change our diet quicker so that we don't have to kill this animals? We don't animals? need to change our diet. We don't need to change we our diet. We don't need to change nothing. It's just to understand the process and then in time it will start change. By changing the process you mean by... If you will understand. Man will come to understand different ways of absorbing energy for his survival. Okay. Yeah. Craving for food, for meat, is part of the structure of the emotion. When you understand that emotion is wrong, you will not do it. When you comprehend the emotion is wrong, automatically will be written on your DNA. And then it goes in your RNA actually, which transfer it to DNA. Don't forget, as we taught, a leaf has a life, a herb has a life too. Depends if you are a vertical or a horizontal walker. Just because a tree doesn't walk, but it grows, walks upwards, has another life still has an amino acid structure. It's organized itself. I don't eat your toe, but I eat your arm. 
I don't eat the pig, but I eat the tree or the shrub. This structure in the inner core has already reached that maturity. This structure above has reached the same maturity. It's for the man to reach the maturity. <coughs> Sorry about that. Can we go on the screen? Or are there any questions? No questions. No questions. There, <clears throat> there is a question by Sandor there. Uh, if people would be sick of blood when when uh, somebody has an accidental injury with bleeding, then who will help him by giving first aid? The smell of blood from hate and war has a different smell than the blood from accident and pain. You will understand this very soon. You will come to understand this very sooner than you think. Brat is still there. He's not a Turkish delight anymore. There are no questions. Just checking on the live stream here. Population control by fear. Where is it? It moved. Our, our parents never walked through the history. Population control by fear, or our parents never walked throughout the history. This time, there is no fear and there is no control. Man will control his own behavior. And that's all we need to do. Hello. Oh. Hello. Good. You know who that is? Hello. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. This is Caroline De Rosa. Yeah. Ha <laughs> I have one question, Mera. Yeah. Do the people, because you're talking about that day, that event, do we carry any effect from whatever our ancestors have done, or is it only today who we are that counts? At the moment, who we are counts. Okay, because you said you're responsible for all your ancestors, and you're the face of whoever passed before you. So I wanted to know if it's only standing for who I am today or I'm carrying the burden from my past of ancestors. Today you, then later on we handle the ancestors. They will okay. talk their own term. Thank you. Thank you very much. This is what to have a wife, huh? She knows what to ask. Any other question? Uh, yes, yes, there's a question from the live stream from Nadine who says, Mr. Let me, Cash. Let me explain, Rick, we better explain. We run webinar for teaching. We run a, a live stream for public. And there is another one. Which one is it? Come? Uh, what is it called? 
here, but there is two or three channels we run simultaneously. So we don't see all the questions. And uh, monitors see the questions in the background. So I don't see the questions which uh, comes to live stream and go to meeting chat rooms. Okay. Carry on, sorry, Rick. Right, so Nadine says, Mr. Kesh, we look forward to, to know more about planet Zeus. What animals do you have in your zoos? We don't have animals. Animals is the habit of the man. We call them other creatures. The whole universe is not full of animals. It's creatures. If you change the word, then you understand. If you are... Uh, you don't need to be clairvoyant to understand the talk and the pain of a dog or a sheep because you see it. You feel it. You know of its existence. So we don't call them animals. Animals is the habit of man because then he has to be the superior. We're all creatures and we try to understand to support each other in different ways. And in that sense, there's probably no uh, zoos in Zeus. There is no what? Zoos. Animal zoos. zoos. No, no, no. Zoo is the habit of the man. Right. He likes to collect. And definitely Belgians are the worst one. They collect everything. Any other question? Um, there is a question, how to clean our blood before using it in the reactor? Clean your soul, your reactor, your blood will be clean. The intention is what is carried by the blood. Those of you who try to, to join us on 21st of September to start the process, Try for next 90 days to clean your soul because you have the same as the governments to sort out the mess. Then we'll see. Any other question? Uh, Nadine has another question. Uh, Mr. Kesh, would you explain what the Earth uh, grid is? It is, a, is it a prison or can it be an access point to access different dimensions? Pardon? Uh, she's talking about, can, would you explain what the Earth's grid is? There, people talk about grid points on the Earth where the energies intersect. And uh, she's asking, is it a prison or is it, can it be an access point to access different dimensions? The interaction of the fields gets locked. The, it's very much like, this is this I explained to because we see this a lot in Europe. In Europe, you see a lot of cross sections and I know what you're talking about because about two years ago, about this time, we were invited to see a man uh, which has made a, what do you call the guy in the west of Italy, who's made a community, and he made church under the ground, and they found him, and they had to change the law in Italy for him. He calls himself Falcon. Yeah. Uh, Piemonte, yeah. Yeah, they believe, this guy believes that where he's built his temple or his community is the cross section of the fields of the planet. And this is some of the strongest point. He calls himself a falcon. I had the chance to meet the guy. We went there with my son a couple of years ago. Yeah. And he believes that he's built uh, the, his community on one of the strongest grid planet. And
and he will be supported and everything. The community lives a very strange life, extremely strange. After the age of seven, I think, or so, your children are not yours, belong to the community. You move them all out into one building. The only thing you hear is the shouting of children, and that's it. And then if you want a child, you go there and get one and bring them home. And uh, I explained this to, to them when I was there, in respect and to the other things when they talk about these lines. The same as you have the physical the structure movement of the plates, which they rub against each other, you have different condition in the interior, which creates a magnetic field flow as well. If you go back to the teaching of the medical, the health section, where we showed how the magnetic field, gravitational field of the amino acid, or what do you call it, nanolayers, led to creation of the hexagonal shapes on the skin of the mat. When there is no physicality, the layers within the structure of the Earth, they are not all in matter state, they are in different strength. So, they create their own magnetic field lines, the same as this on the magnetic field line on your skin. If you look, your skin is not the straight, it's like hexagonal. So if you go back into the teachings, we have talked about it. So, in some parts, the fields, when they interact, you get these field lines. Because it's a dimension of interaction. Because the internal structure is not totally spherical. It has indentation due to a lot of factors, the land mass, the pressure on the plasma of the, uh, what do you call it, magma, the other conditions. There is a very fundamental question. I've raised it, but in the book, I'll try to answer it in the book, which is called The Structure of the Planetary System, is that there is a hypocrisy that Earth has a solid core and the inner core, which now we call the Caroline core, and there is no, there is no guarantee that there is a solid core. This core is made of composition of gas or other materials which are different than the magma. You see the same structure in the brain of the man. We see like a block brick, a solid state, in the brain of the man, where there is actually no solid structure. So, there is 100%. There is no solid core. It's just different density of what you call um, ganses or materials in a plasmatic condition, which creates a different density, and this is done primarily by the gravitational magnetic field of the totality from the center upwards. You see it in your matter reactors. When you put a GANS in, when you put a different GANS materials in, you see the hollow center, and then you see the liquid, and then the state of matter decides where to appear. This is that line between the water and the state of matter that slides over. Because from magma on is a state of matter. If you cut the earth, there is no difference between the structure of the earth and in the brain. In so many ways, I, was, I can explain to you something which might be strange, is that magma is the blood carries the emotion of the planet. The liquid is the lymph of the body. It gives, and at the point of creation, decides what is to be created. So, the planet in a structure is no different than a man. It distributes all its fields according to what it needs, and the water is the length. It brings the material state in. And where the two match in the right way, you get the state of matter. And then you get the state of matter in a dynamic form, you call it animal, freeze, or whatever. Because don't forget, as I said, there is never ever 
zero humidity. So the life of man is controlled by the lymph of it. And if you look at it, this is the skull, this is the gap, and that's where the brain is stuck. What shines in, what rains in. And moisture is part of it. It's like the calcium in the body of the man. It spreads everywhere. So, in fact, Earth is a living thing with emotion and physicality. Now you can imagine how much this planet has suffered from misconduct of one animal. And then you wonder why earthquake? Why does he try to get rid of them? Why does he blow out them? Enough is enough. You have caused enough suffering even on your own mother. So, the magnetic field flow comes from the interaction of these layers of fields, and in a way, if in a long when man science goes further, see the line of these magnetic fields exactly as you see the line of your skin, hexagonal shapes or upper atmosphere. Because these are nano layers, plasmatic, enforcing the conditions. So the lines do exist, it comes from the interaction of different layers, the same as do. As we said, the three layers of the skin of the man in nanostructure gives the hexagonal shape of your skin, if you look at it. Because we see the same thing on the ring of Saturn's, we see the same, sorry, on the north pole of the Saturn's. So it's the field interaction, they do exist, and where the three or six interact, they create the line of interaction. So. You see it as line of field forces in the matter state because they are not in the other condition. Any other question? Um, there's apparently a question in the live stream from uh, Robert, but I can't find where the question is, so I'm not sure. Um, he says, uh, Bernard, I'm asking a question, and quit goofing, and I don't see where the question is that he's referring to, so I'm not sure what that is all about. Um, there's another question. Uh, was, was the history of man to learn to become universal, divine, from where we initially originate, and now is the mo <clears throat> Can you repeat? It says, the question, was the history of man to learn to become universal, divine, from where we initially originate, and now is the moment to remember this and be divine out of free will? Put it this way, you got to do it, you have no choice. You had the free will and you stayed with the behavior of the present. Now you need a little bit of help to mature. The strange thing is, if you've been to some tribes in Africa, they know there are others who are more advanced. They are being with them. They know you go there, they're wearing something, they know it's come from somewhere. But, number of times, when you ask them the question, you're standing up, and you look in the sky, and they see aircraft passing. They don't call it an alien. They know some of their brothers achieved the point that they can go, but to them, is can is not imagining what, how they got there. So, we are already aliens to ourselves because we didn't manage to reach them. I've had this experience 20 years ago in Africa. And it's a very peculiar feeling. When you stand next to a man, uh, usually the young people, they know, they've heard, they've been to a village or somewhere, they've seen, some of them haven't even seen a car, but they know it's something which moves because the white man comes in it. and. On the other hand, 
they watch the sky, they see the achievement of other men, and on the other hand, they are detached from it. They say, how does it work? What is it? Don't you fall out of it? Can you walk in it? I've had this explanation in Africa with the children a few times. So, you are that man in the jungle of Africa in respect to the universe. So, they evolve. So, Robert asks, when will the man from space start to teach? What? When will the man from space start to teach? Oh my God, you haven't even learned alphabet. You are like a little boy. He went to school, he learned ABC, and he could learn, he could count one, two, and three. After two, three weeks in the school, he came home and he said to me and Caroline, I don't need to go to school anymore. I learned everything. <laughs> I can read and I can write. And besides that, it seems the man from space is already starting to teach. Uh, Pardon? It seems the man from space is already uh, starting to teach as far as that goes as well. Yeah, but it's a long way to go. It's a long way to go. Oh God, he stuck his head out again. Has he paid his fee yet, Kevin Davino, for this question? <laughs> Have you seen the size of the question? It's half a page. This Stanley says, interesting news coming out by studying NASA gravity recovery and climate experiments. Third of the world, a third of the world biggest groundwater basins are in I presume disaster areas in the disaster in the disaster in distress in distress ah okay I got it now a third of the world biggest groundwater ground are in distress Mr. Cash in the last month I have been given freely unconditionally I have been giving freely and conditionally my love and care, my field from within my soul to all souls equally, beginning most necessary to all humanity for human animals. Please, can you comment? Oh, that's, that's Kevin Davenos. I, was, I thought it was still standing. Okay. Can you comment or explain when not only only dozens, but hundreds, thousands, millions do that simultaneously, every day and night continuously, focus with pure intention. I or we have been learning from you so deeply. We don't need to give unconditionally at the same time. You have to learn to give unconditionally all the time. It's very strange. When you give unconditionally, somehow it comes back. But when we do it totally, we raise the level of the totality. Because as we gain more, we give more, we have access not only to resources of this planet, it becomes so much that you receive from totality of the universe. This is one thing which I've explained before, and it's just gone over the head. You make the change that you bring the level of the soul of the man to a right level, then the man attracts new forces, which raises the man's soul to a higher level. This is what you cannot, and somehow you do not understand. Don't be afraid of what you're going to lose by not eating a meat. Imagine how much energy you get that you have more to give with it. It's very much when you have a fibromyalgia. When you get rid of the pain, when 
we help you that you don't have the suffering of the pain, you walk different, you talk different, you attract different people. When you are sick, you attract people who are vouchers for the sick. When you stand up your strength, you stand straight, you behave correct, you gather different friends because they are not the abusers, now these are equals. So as the mind changes its behavior, will attract new, more powerful, much nicer, cleaner field forces from the universe. So the whole soul of the man and the planet elevates. This is what your fear is. Fear of losing, but in fact, it should be joy of learning and earning more. And when you learn this, you'll find out all of you will sit and just give. And you don't even worry about where the food comes from, because the nourishment will come through the soul, which will feel the physicality. It's very, very simple. You lot have not understood. And when you understand, it becomes easier and easier. The more they try to stop, because they pay attention to, they bring more fields and you grow. Look at the structure of the Keshe Foundation. The more we got pressures by the government or the kings, the more field they brought, the more energy they brought, the more we grew. It's so simple, because they just bring it to you, because they want to take it, they put energy. I've told you so many times, giving love is very easy. The one who refuses love, loses more, because he has to make a decision, is spend energy on it. And when you return it, it's short of that much energy, plus what I got back, because now you spend time on it. A man never refuses a love. Because I receive it, I have more to give more. And this is the fear of man. We test ourselves how much love we can give, and we choose who we want to give it, and the condition we want to give love to. Because the time you spend on deciding how much and what, not only you package the stays the same, you lost so much of your energy. A fool loses money. Do you go to work to lose? What do the Chinese do? They work all day and gamble all night, whatever they work all day for, and they go, they work the next day, and they stay in the same position. Yeah, that comes out of the stress of losing. <clears throat> so, when you decide, when you dictate, who can come to the Cash Foundation, who you can love, who you can allow to do this, it means you have already lost so much energy to make this decision. So you are already a loser. You are already lost before even you become. And you never reach, and you never understand the ethos of the You fall in love with the humanity. You fall in love with the universe. And when you are in love, it means you give freely. You choose a few because you are connected physically to, that's a different matter. So, the more you give, the more has to come, because there has to be a balance. This is, the, this is the way a plasma works, and the man, his feeling, his emotion is all part of the same. You can never destroy yourself, but you always stay in the point of balance. So, the more you give, the more you have to receive to stay in balance. What's your problem? And don't forget, the biggest rule of the universe, and if you understand it, you will survive it, and you will understand it fully, is gravity is always bigger than magnetical, that's why you have mass. Why are you afraid of it? Gathering more mass to give more, to be more love, to give more love? This is what nobody understands. And mass is when the gravity is bigger than magnetical. Magnetical is what you give out, gravity is what you hold on to. So, it's always me. The more you give, the more it comes back. You get the more you can give. Why do you love one person? 
not the whole of humanity, in true sense, and not one of, not only humanity, the animals, what you would call the other creatures, and the universe. Then you become the man of peace. Because the more I love, the more I live loving, the more I receive. And then what happened? We've been put a condition. Why do you love that one? Not me. Oh God, I already love half of a dozen. You want more? <laughs> now you can imagine the dilemma of the Arab man with four wives and 40 part-time wives. That's your right. Now you see why they are so affectionate, because they learn more and more to give. And they are more children. Would you like to become a Muslim? With your wife, you have. I never. <laughs> She's lovable enough. So, what do you do? How do you limit the amount you give? I always said, and always say, anybody who comes here, I always tell you, welcome home. And people get shocked by it. Because this is a home, this is a house of God. It's only giving, is the only object. So, it's you how much you take with you. This is you who decides, I'm going to make it a home, or I'm going to kill the teacher, because I have a better master. We greeted you all the same. The first time you came to the Sansano, you all even received a present. Do you still have it? Which animal are you? <laughs> Which one are you? <laughs> Many eyes. When the first group of knowledge seekers came to the Sansano, because they came to the Space Institute, and in space, you have no limitation on animal combination or what you can be. I bought of the cartoon film at that time different characters, and each one could choose which one he likes to be. Got it? Yeah. So they carried one alien home the first day they came in. So they're used to aliens. The only worst alien is me you've never seen before. So it's bad enough. So you get the structure. You understand? And actually, all the teaching of today, all the teaching of today comes with this talk only. Everything we talk from the beginning and from the end, in every shape or form, any color you put around it comes to this. And that is, the more you give, the more you receive. What are you afraid of? Except killing. Because when you kill, there is no more to give you. This is part of the problem which the world leaders don't understand, and especially the priests. When I say priests, I mean all the religious leaders is when you kill a man, you have less man to give you. You want to shoot yourself, not to eat. When you create a war in the name of the religion, you kill more, so you have less to worship you. You have more or less thing to give you. A fool does what these war leaders do and the religious leaders do. Don't forget the golden rule. The more you give, the more you receive. Otherwise, you have no mass. Now you understand what I say. All leaders carry no soul because everything is gone. There is no more to give to them. Religious leaders, the same. What are you paying for? What they've done, they've taken everything Christ had. In the name of whatever. Not a single word of any prophet of God is acted upon today, truly. Because it did not suit the ones who are supposed to be the guardians. They change it the way it suits them. The same is with the world leaders. So, would you like to have less? 
And then you understand when I say, when Obama came into power, he came with a lot. He's going with much less because he's committed too many murders in the name of supporting, doing things, and the rest. The same with other world leaders. Because they never understood the truth and the fact about this little simple thing. When one American gets killed, in the line of duty they call it to kill another man, he voted for him. Next time, it's less all American to be given to him. So he's a fool to lose. Don't talk about the Pope, he's worse. And the religious leaders in Iran and the rest of the world and the Jewish and other ones, they're all in the same boat. You don't send children on the line with a plastic key to give their lives for mine. You find a solution. How many children have gone, which should have been the fathers, and how many suffering from the mothers and the parents who don't have those children, less souls to contribute more to the soul of Muhammad. What religion is this? Murdering religion? Doesn't matter. The same with the Jews. What they've done in Palestine, and they're still doing it. Don't go to the Sikhs and the Buddhists. They're worse than the other ones. So, what do you do? How much more do you want to lose? Now, maybe you understand the fact. And less than 1.1111111% of you will listen to this here. But today's teaching will stay for a life of the man. Because the truth is spoken and it's for you to decide. We harm no one, but we show you how to protect yourself from being harmed. Love as many people as you like, and give to as many people love as you can, because once you stop loving, you are actually dead anyway. <sighs> so, are there any more questions or we call it a day? Oh, there is a question. No, Kevin Davana is the last one. Any questions, Rick? Do you know what the time is? Eleven forty. I think two and a half hours of today is more than what it was for the past whole five years of teaching. You know when we started the first teachings, it was one man, two men, three men in one room. And the next week we came about ten. And then the following week we got 15, 20. And by the fourth week we couldn't get enough people in the room. You've been in the room with his house in, in, in Belgium. He said, can you come and explain to me and my friends? There was three or four of us. And then he says, do you mind if you come in next Friday and explaining a little bit more? There was 10 of them. And then he got to the point that we couldn't get any more people in the room. 25 was the maximum. And then we started the public teaching. Because really understood, not only because of the help, but what the knowledge can bring. And then the same man who's brought so much, the Belgians are trying to put him in prison because they can't get hold of me. And I protect him the best we can. Mr. Delanois is a murderer sitting in the police of Kortrijk with the king of Belgium who's trying to harm Willy, who supported to bring the knowledge out. And if they touch him, Attach the king and his family. That's a promise. Thank you very much indeed for today. And we'll see what will come out on 21st. Thank you indeed. Okay, thank you, Mr. Kesh. Thank you indeed. Bye-bye.
Okay, that's the end of t the end of today's uh, sixty six knowledge seekers workshop. And thank you everybody for attending. So I don't think this is the application to the Japanese nation, but as we said, we will not stop the process. We're still planning, we're still developing. We are getting prepared for accepting the scientists from TEPCO here at the Keshe Foundation to further develop facilities for extraction of the rest of the residual material. I thank Marco for Anne Stanley and Elia for bringing uh, the paper together. It's been done very rapid way. And to support us, we release every single email communication, every secure lines communication in public line to defend our position that knowledge has to be free and has to be pointed to where it came from. And I thank you very much, and I thank our collaborators and partners in Japan who were appointed by the Office of the Prime Minister to negotiate between the two sides. And since the uh, past 48 hours, 72 hours, by release of this information about TEPCO has tainted the relationship between their partners in Japan and Japanese government. On the other hand, we have, we will make the second workshop of the health, which was released this week, to do with the development of the medical application and tools and the reactors in public. This is very important, first of all, to safeguard a number of the cash foundation supporters in Belgium, because uh, they've been threatened by Mr. Delanois, the chief of police of uh, uh, Cortrec, with all sorts of things that he could get access to destroy evidence against his own criminal actions. So we deliberately did open the containers, not only to teach, but show what he's using to make threats, to put certain lives in danger. As a policeman, he has to be withdrawn from the office of the police of the court track till his criminal investigation by international police is finalized. He is using his position, not Italian, uh, Belgium's knowing, to access information to destroy to gain himself, not to self-discriminate. And this is the false use of the police power. And the same thing goes with the prosecutor of uh, Cortrec, who's supporting him as part of the structure of the Kingdom of Belgium, with the ex-King of Belgium as head. So we make our point very clear in, in respect to our international condition. On the other hand, in the coming days, we will release further new technologies. These are technologies which I've kept, as we say, in the back pocket for years, which will change the whole process of the structure of the work of the foundation teaching. The same way as open the medical application, <coughs> I've been trying to teach in a very rapid way different aspects of the technology and understanding. To be able to understand the totality, you have to understand the work of the foundation of the work. One of the problems with us has been, we have not understood the totality of the work of our own home. What does this mean? This means that in the coming times, of past centuries and thousands of years, as we have added to our knowledge, we have not, in totality, understood the work. So, what we've done, we have made a lot of guesses. Part of this guess has been the operation and the interaction of what we call the source of the plasma of our solar system, the sun, and the working of our planet. In so many ways, I put the sun in a very small size because we consider it to be in a distance, but we try to look at the structure of the home. The home to us is Earth. It's in totality. It cannot work, we cannot live, if we do not consider it in one piece. You cannot have a home if you don't have a roof. You cannot have a home if you don't have a basement. 
So a home is totality of one's place of existence. So if we get the sun and we consider our earth commencing soon after on May 4th, 2015. The students of the Keshe Foundation Spaceship Institute will be the leaders of the future who will make changes in all areas of space technology, science, medicine, agriculture, and energy. Anyone is able to apply, but acceptance is through invitation only. No prerequisites are required. We will be accepting approximately 250 students for the three-year executive master's program and 120 students for the one-year executive master's program. We welcome humanity's participation in the knowledge of the Keshe Foundation Spaceship Institute. Where does humanity go from here? That is up to you. Apply today. Okay, that was the promotional video for the KFSSI, as it's known as. And now we'll hear from Mr. Kesh of the Kesh Foundation Spaceship Institute and uh, see what he has uh, for us today. Uh, Mr. Kesh, are you there? I'm not, I'm not here. Oh, there we go. Am I unmuted now? Can I speak? Okay. Yes, I think uh, Vince has allowed you to speak there now. <laughs> no problem. Thank you very much, Your Majesty. Um, good morning, good day to you. Thank you for joining us wherever you are, whatever time. And uh, during the day or night, you listen to these programs. Uh, as part of the work of the Cash Foundation and uh, Cash Foundation Space Institute, um, today, as we've done all the time in the past, uh, we tried if there is something important to bring into uh, public attention more than just being part of the teaching of the classes, we try to put it uh, on Thursday mornings. And today, I think what we are about to discuss on uh, adding to the knowledge is important enough that it needs a whole session on its own. This is part of the structure of the Earth. We live with it. It's part of the way we live, but we've been ignorant to it, or we haven't understood the totality of it. And as we are opening the space, we have first to understand how our own home works before we get out. Where the things are, where is the kitchen, and where is the, what you call it, the bedroom and the sitting room. In reality, we have not understood this in the work of the planet Earth, and a lot of assumptions and mysteries have been built around it because the whole package never been together. We try to put and add slightly more to this knowledge today, and it uh, more or less deserves to be on its own. So the knowledge adding part of the workshop today is about the structure of the planet Earth and how it works and how it's come to be and what we have that we have never understood. Before we do, as usual, we make certain number of uh, what we think is important to know uh, uh, as a part of the work of the Foundation. First of all, um, I have to uh, explain, as the knowledge seekers know, uh, as of today, Cash Foundation and Space Institute um, go into separate position. We have um, acquired, and uh, we are opening, as of next week, the Cash Foundation Research and Development, and Cash Foundation Technologies, and Cash Foundation as a, a international organization, offices, and laboratories here in Valletta, which is about six kilometers from here, and the teaching arm and the research site totally separate from this week. This is important for us because we've got to the point of uh, development that we want to bring international scientists to work, but they don't need to be in the teaching and lessening sessions. So the two sides work separately, but if they need, they can join or add, or as the knowledge seekers um, break through new technologies or new understandings, the foundation, as we promised, will support their breakthrough, or what you call the 
a spin-off in a commercial sense. So uh, the facilities now is being made available. We will release the what you call the all the details about the place and the position. We have all the facilities for flight tests. Uh, we have enough land facilities. We have uh, all the accommodations for up to about 15 a spin-off within the next six months, eight months. And so um, we are building what we structured ourselves for. And meanwhile, the new center will be what we call the center of excellence for space technology. Uh, we welcome any organization to collaborate with us. And as part of this, as some of you know, Sears Aerospace Group will be here next week. And if we come to final agreement, we'll announce the collaboration between the two. And on the other hand, when we open the institute, if you were here on the opening session, we promise that we take the technologies of third world nations and Africa first. And uh, in so many ways, to keep to our ethos, we have come to an agreement on an initial basis last night, and we'll confirm it. And very soon, we have uh, Ghana Space Institute as part of the Keshe Foundation Collaboration Group. So we teach in Ghana directly to the scientists who are involved in the space and space exploration, because Ghana has the institute. And there are um, some 19 scientists uh, within the institute who are developing further for development of the satellites and uh, other things of the Space Institute of Ghana. So as we promised, as of uh, next week, once we finish the final agreement, all the teachings of the Cash Foundation is freely open in Ghana universities. Once so any student in Ghana in the scientific level and in the institute can access the teachings freely. Uh, this will be followed soon with the South University of Sierra Leone, hopefully, and then we develop into the other Af African nations. So not we collaborate with organizations in America, like Sierra Leone Cyril Group, we'll do the same with the Africans we keep our ethos to. So very soon in our teachings, as of next week, we will be sitting with our people from Africa, scientists that participate in the development and testing according the way we've seen in China. And at the same time, this is important because what we do here is important to be fed back directly into population that it can be used. There is a point which we raise today and we leave it as that and then we come back to it when the time is appropriate. Uh, as you know, last week I wasn't here because there was tests going on in Fukushima directly, which I had to be involved in personally in the laboratory that we could get the best result. And as we have told you, we've been involved with Fukushima since last year in different stages of development. Even as we speak today, the sixth test, which is to do with tritium um, cleanup, test is going on. This is initiated by TEPCO directly themselves on the back of the test of the uh, what we saw in uh, last Thursday with the soil testing. There is a point has risen, and as you know, Cash Foundation never leaves uh, things in uh, a position of uh, uncertainty. We make our point, and we expect the answer. Um, team of People in the background are literally writing the papers, and in the coming days we release the paper. According to what we understand, TEPCO has used the technology of the Cash Foundation in the past three months, and they have announced it through IAEA, International Atomic Energy Authorities, that they have managed to succeed to extract certain nuclear materials from the water contaminated. Uh, uh, 1,500 tanks plus on the hills of Fukushima. As we understand, and the report we have with the Italian Nuclear Center test, as a matter of respect, TEPCO should...
Welcome, everyone, to the 66th Cash Nolly Seekers Workshop. It's Thursday, June 18th, 2015. And today, once again, we will hear from Mr. Cash of the Cash Foundation Spaceship Institute. And um, first, we're going to have the promotional video from the Cash Foundation Spaceship Institute. Where does humanity go from here? What have we tried to do? What if there is more, much more? The Cash Foundation is proud to announce a new way to bring humanity forward through technology that brings humanity in line with the natural operation of the planet and universe itself. science and technology discovered and developed by the nuclear engineer Moran Kesh centers upon the use and control of magnetical gravitational fields. This new body of knowledge opens the road to hundreds of potential applications, which offer solutions to most of the fundamental problems of the world, such as water, food, environmental contamination, and shortages of energy. The Kesh Foundation is proud to unveil the Kesh Foundation Spaceship Institute. Nestled amidst the beautiful shores of Bari, Italy, the Institute is poised to become a central hub in the spreading of plasma technology and knowledge. With its state-of-the-art 21st century facilities, the Institute will be able to provide students and staff an immersive way to learn the plasma technology, to be the leaders of the new generation of scientists and plasma engineers. Cash Foundation has opened the door to the world for peaceful usage of technology that is independent of the limited resources that are available on Earth. This is an understanding of how everything works together in harmony in our universe, and it applies to everything from the smallest to the biggest, from atoms to galaxies. We all are able to collectively work together in pursuit of knowledge, innovation, and solutions for our society. This learning environment is new to the world, where there will be no test to confirm your understanding. The knowledge of everyone will be respected and allowed to flourish in a nurturing environment. Hands-on testing and experimenting will be widely used in conjunction with roundtable discussions to bring all opinions and knowledge forward. Students will be introduced to a change in the ethos of working in collaboration. Students will experience firsthand how we share knowledge in a free and open manner. Graduating students are expected to share the knowledge they gain from the university within their respective communities and nations. All formal teachings, lectures, and presentations will be in the English language, with technology available for immediate translation. Keshe Foundation Spaceship Institute will be offering three-year executive master programs for undergraduate degree students and one-year executive master programs for graduate degree students in the following fields. Space transportation, new plasma technology, health, agriculture, materials, energy. The health section is designed to make students able to live in space without the need to return to Earth. To this end, the Keshe Foundation Spaceship Institute has found processes for many diseases including ALS, cancer, coma, epilepsy, multiple sclerosis. Cash Foundation Spaceship Institute will offer online teaching courses which will enable anyone, anywhere around the world to enroll and increase their knowledge and understanding. Students will have the opportunity to direct their work towards commercial spin-offs and seek funding through the help of the Cash Foundation. The access to the new science and new technologies is openly available for peaceful use to the benefit of mankind to make a better world today. Now you can be part of the changing world and the new knowledge. All commercial spin-offs are intended to be open source and patent free. This is part of the core ethos of the Keshe Foundation and the Keshe Foundation Spaceship Institute. Cash Foundation Spaceship Institute will have its official inauguration on April 21st, 2015, with courses to inform the Cash Foundation that they have used their technology before they announce it, that they have done the job and they cleaned up. So what this means 
they have taken the technology, they have used it without allowing or letting us know, and or because being successful, they are carrying on with the following tests for cesium and tritium. This is not correct, and we have made our point very clear to the, to the Japanese government in past 48 hours. And to be correct, within coming days, Marco, headed with Marco and Stanley, we release a scientific paper with all the communications with TEPCO that the technology should have been opened and should have been announced and we should have been informed how it's been that they can build on the knowledge, not just to be a private use for the Japanese government. And I will make this very clear. We have informed our partners in Japan. We are not happy with this condition. They are not happy with what has happened. And we expect announcement by TEPCO. We will not stop collaboration. We collaborate because TEPCO, there are few people but we are supporting the Japanese nation. And this will stay the same. If the phase three development was successful, that in less than two months they have managed to extract the nuclear material specifically, which they asked us for. They asked us specifically to design, to develop a technology, to specifically to take this material out. And in past three years, four years, they've tried everything, they couldn't do it. Within two months of receiving the material testing, they have achieved it. This is what I call incorrect conduct. And it has to be put right if international collaboration is to go on. There is a question mark by the intermediaries between the Japanese government, TEPCO, and Keshe Foundation that the intermediaries are withdrawing their support. So this can damage or cancel the meeting of the 1st of July, which has been arranged by the government and the Cash Foundation. They would like to withdraw because they see it as uh, dishonoring the name of the Japanese nation with the conduct of the temple. We have asked them to stay on course and till we release our documents. And then we pass the document to IEA at the highest level. I will pass a copy of the document to my president, His Excellency, uh, Ayatollah Rouhani to pass on to IAEA. I have direct access to the offices. We pass a copy to the Office of the Prime Minister of Japan and we ask, we send one copy to the Director of TEPCO to clarify the position. <laughs> For three, four years, they've been trying to extract the stratum. They could not do, specifically in emails which we release, as we did with the fraud with uh, Mr. Stephen Hawking, we, we released the papers. They asked us specifically to develop a technology for extraction of a stratum. We did. We delivered all the materials. And immediately on the test, even they would not allow our people and the intermediaries to take any notes in the conference when the meeting took place that what they achieved. So this shows deception. And I presume this is to do with the number of people in TEPCO and not with TEPCO as a whole. But if this is the behavior of TEPCO, there is a lot to be asked from the Office of the President of TEPCO, his behavior and his position, if it's attainable. Because other scientists around the world will not collaborate with Japan if you are there totally to help a nation. We give our knowledge free. We give our technology free to world population but the others are not so generous as us. So it means there might be, and there's a possibility of deception by TEPCO using other people's technology. And in fact, what I wrote to the intermediary, this puts a question mark on the honorability of the Japanese nation and their conduct. We'll await the result from the Office of the Prime Minister of Japan or TEPCO in respect to what the Japanese intimately call a theft. A nation cannot steal. A nation which steals a gift is a thief by nature.